Hey everyone, my name is Rhys and welcome to my YouTube channel. And today I want to talk to you about this. The Atari 5200. Obviously this isn't the Atari 5200 itself, this is the box for the 5200. And the reason it came in such a comically large box is because it's quite a comically large console, uh, as you can see. So this was released in 1982 in the US, uh, never made it outside of the US. Uh, it was only on the market for less than two years before it was discontinued uh, due to poor sales. Uh, so essentially they sold about a million in total, according to Atari's official figures. Uh, there's, there's some speculation that that's probably been pumped up a little bit, which sounds like a lot, but when you compare it to its predecessor, the 2600, uh, that sold 30 times as many units in the same time. Uh, so it's easy to it's easy to see why Atari considered this a failure and decided to pull the plug. And it's a real shame because it's one of my favourite systems by Atari. Um, it's based on their 8-bit home computer system. Unfortunately, it doesn't run the cartridges directly. There are some physical differences between the cartridges. As you can see, the 52 carts are uh, quite a bit bigger. Also, some differences electronically between the 5200 console and the 8-bit home computers that meant that uh, there had to be some adaptations to the code for the various games, um, which a lot of developers were quite reluctant to do due to the fact that they didn't really sell many of these. Uh, and unfortunately, in the uh, two years that it was on the market, there were only actually 69 lol, uh, commercial game releases for it. Uh, one of the reasons the 5200 wasn't so popular at the time, and something it got a bit of a, a slating for in the press at the time, the joysticks, which is a real shame because they're quite innovative. Um, they had uh, analog analog sticks, which was uh, kind of a first. They had the 12 digit 12 digit button pad there. Uh, it was the first console to introduce a pause button, um, and it had basically lots of fire buttons and, and various other things. Unlike Atari's previous computers and consoles, it introduced this new type of connector. The console itself wasn't compatible with standard Atari joysticks, and obviously these joysticks weren't compatible with other Atari systems. And one of the issues internally with these joysticks was the uh, flex PCB that they used, the, the, the flex circuit. Fortunately, now we're in the 21st century, there are plenty of companies making various upgrades and add-ons for these retro systems, um, and that includes Best Electronics in California, who specialise in Atari things been around for a long time and uh, they make a flex PCB replacement kit for these very joysticks. In this video I'm going to show you how to install it, it's very easy, uh, it takes all of about 10 minutes, uh, no, no particular uh, electronics or soldering skills required. So uh, let's, let's go ahead and get on with the tutorial. So here we have our CX52 joystick. We're going to be replacing these fire buttons on each side, the function buttons across the top. The joystick itself doesn't come as part of the kit, but to be honest that should be fine anyway. And this uh, keypad on the front. So here's the kit from Best Electronics. As you can see we have the buttons with the gold contacts on the back, and also the flex PCB. So first things first, we need to get into this thing, which is just a case of removing three screws on the back and then carefully prising the two halves apart. And one thing just to be aware of is where the flex PCB runs under the left hand fire button here into these top function buttons, so uh, just be careful around this area. Now we're inside, we can see that they've actually crammed quite a lot of stuff in here. So we've got the flex PCB, which connects all of the buttons. And we've also got two potentiometers, one for X and one for Y, so up and down and left and right. So we'll just continue stripping this thing down. And here we have the new flex PCB. We can compare it to the old one. The new one comes with gold contacts. Here are the replacement buttons. Now as you can see, these have gold contacts on the back rather than the old carbon contacts of the old ones. And they've doubled up on them as well, just to be sure. I 
I've discovered that this job's actually much easier if you remove this plastic piece. And then we fit the PCB to it, making sure we line up these little locating lugs here. And we pull this part around the back and just hold it in place while we refit the plastic piece. And we just need to tuck everything back in where it came from. As we can see, the replacement keypad buttons also have gold contacts on them, so these should be a massive improvement too. So now we just need to refit these fire buttons. So just a quick word on how this joystick mechanism works. So there's a sliding plate here with a shaft. When we put it back together we need to make sure everything's lined up properly and make sure that the shaft is located in the moulding in the back part of the controller. And there are two lugs here which align with the cams on the potentiometers. But first things first we need to remove the front part with the function buttons. And I find that generally the easiest way to do this without causing any damage is to push it through from the back with a screwdriver while prising the front off with my fingernails, although you could use a plastic card. As you can see these buttons have the same gold contacts as the others. Now we could refit these straight away but I find it's easier to leave this until the very end and we'll see why in a moment. Now we come to the trickiest part of the process which is reassembling everything while keeping all of that joystick mechanism in alignment. This usually takes a couple of attempts but uh, we get there in the end and then it's just a case of refitting the three screws on the back. Finally we reposition those front function buttons and refit the plastic part on the front. And we're done. So as you can see with the uh, missile command there, something that's only really possible with an analog joystick. Um, but yeah, controller's working absolutely fantastically well now. So thanks for watching. Um, if you like that and you want to see some more of my tutorials and more of my informational Atari videos, please like and subscribe. Now hopefully see you later.